Are you looking for answers? Do you have questions? Do you want the truth? Are you sick of fake content? Well, join me here at Doof Doof Paranormal and with the help of my friends, I hope to find what we're all looking for, the answers. Let's try something real fast. Everybody close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Out through your, out through your mouth. Now just blank your mind. Don't think about anything. Now set your intention to pick up a name of somebody who passed here. Don't the first name that comes to it, go with it. Don't don't try and throw it away. Your favorite. It's not fair. And if anybody wants to share a name that they're picking up what about oh. joshua not well, Jennifer. robert hold on, hold on, hold on. robert i got robert too okay let me check my phone hold on. anybody else frank michael who said frank who said frank karen 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 what, what are you trying to do to us <laughs> what <laughs> oh no i forgot uh, no, <laughs> So now back to the story of the school, but before I go back to the history of the school, I'll touch on the Great Fire of Virginia City, and there's a reason I'm touching on that uh, in connection to the school. A lady named Kate Shea, although she wasn't known as a lady back in the day, Crazy Kate is how she was known, ran a boarding house in A Street, which is approximately now where the Cobb Mansion stands uh, and Kate and her boarding house um, residents did not have a good reputation in the town not at all they were not liked because they were loud disrespectful carrying on to all hours of the morning keeping people awake so how does Kate fall into all of this well Kate's uh, boarding house is where the great fire of Virginia City started they uh, say that once everyone had sort of settled down early hours of the morning, somebody must have knocked over a lantern, which in turn started the fire. Bells rang and people shouted and everyone started to come try fight the fire. They used uh, one of these lovely little fire engines back in the day to try and do that. But this map here that you're looking at shows you basically most of the parts that were burnt to the ground. Far more damage than that was done, but that was to the ground basically in those areas. Which leads to the school and where the school now stands. Because when the fire started uh, back in the day, the Old Globe Hotel now, or well stood now where the um, the school does. So what had happened was the Old Globe Hotel burnt down. Then the um, townsfolk decided to purchase that land to build the school on because this township was growing. Despite the fire, the town was booming. So they needed places for all the children in the town to go to school and that seemed like the perfect place to build it. Um, the building was able to accommodate up to a thousand students, which was huge for back in the day. It had toilets, it had running water on every level of the facility. Uh, it had heating installed, so it's sort of central heating, I guess you'd call it, for back in the day. Um, and it's, it was used up until 1936. 1936 saw the last class go uh, graduate and then the school just closed down because the town was uh, diminishing in size due to the fact that the mines just weren't as valuable as they were. People were moving away. The, uh, and as I say, the, the school stood there empty for quite some time until they started to renovate it. They got some grants given to them. So they wanted to go back in and save this old historical building. But in the interim, they found a archway that belonged to the old Globe Hotel when it stood there, along with a whole heap of artifacts and all that sort of thing that were ex excavated and found. So 
they had to spend an extra ten thousand dollars doing all that before they could start actually fixing the um, foundations of the school and so on and so forth but very interesting history i don't know if anyone died in that fire on the globe hotel um, it wouldn't surprise me any um, uh, i think 300 odd people lost their lives in the fire that night but now the school stands as a reminder of what it looked like back in the day which was just glorious and all these cheeky little faces i just love these photos they're just gorgeous you can see these in the school museum and uh, the uh, school itself uh, has lots of different um, uh, exhibitions in it like they, they've got the exhibit on the school itself and then they've got the exhibit on the Comstock load and all different sorts uh, one photo that I liked when I saw it was this one and it's a picture of Molly and Stella Molly Summers and Stella Summers Morgan because Stella got married obviously um, but they were school teachers at the school now Molly, uh, well, they all taught at the school until it closed down in 1936. That's my understanding. So in April of 1960, this uh, was put in the local paper and explained that Molly had passed away at the age of 89 and she was to be buried at the Mountain View Cemetery. Um, uh, she didn't... I, I did try to find out a little bit more about Molly, but really couldn't. She didn't marry, she didn't have children, but um, she obviously did have a good relationship with her sister Stella. Uh, then three years later, Stella passed away. Um, same age when she passed away as her sister Mo uh, Molly but she was the widow of Daniel P Morgan and she had children and she was much loved and she was buried in a family plot with her husband uh, Daniel and that's Stella's stone not as pretty as Molly's but there you go so on my visit to Virginia City I did go to the school. I went, I think it was my almost my last day there because all the motorbikes had started to come into town and uh, I just wanted to get a nice look at it and I wasn't disappointed at all. The work that they're doing on this school is so good. Um, it It's just beautiful and it's wonderful that they've been able to maintain it to look like it did back in the day the original floorboards the desks everything that oh and there's the heating in the middle of the room everything that you see there in that classroom is from back in the days when the school was still open and i thought you might be interested these stairs are so super noisy um but the scuff marks that you can see on the uh, railing there the gentleman that runs the kiosk told me that yeah they're from the kids back in the day all those scuff marks are from the shoes of the students that went back throughout the years in that school he said because they were the bell would ring and they'd all hop on the um railing of the staircase and slide down and that there for those of you who don't know is an old switchboard uh, before before the invention of mobile telephones um, now this is the next level up from the kiosk level and they have a function room up here that can be it can be divided in two so so it can be one great big humongous function room or you can pull the ball across and have two then on the other side you've got exhibitions that you can look at or exhibits beg your pardon exhibits that you can look at um, there was no you couldn't go up to the next level up I don't know why but uh, either way just it, they're really doing some great work and uh, if you want a place to hold a function there's one um, this is some of the stuff that was in one of the rooms um, talking about all the sports that they used to do back in the day um, this is one of the bathrooms and that's the kiosk you're greeted by a lovely gentleman or a lady when you come in um, the tickets are pretty inexpensive you can have a look around the kiosk and the gift shop there um, and that's when it's open every day from 10 to 5 except I would assume in a blizzard now if you're interested in donating please have a look at their Facebook page um, I'll put a link to um, 
this fundraiser in my video description but should you have a spare five bucks to throw the school's way it's really worth it that they really are keeping the history of the town alive now for anyone interested ghost stories a little boy waves from the window of the school you can hear the voices of children running and laughing in the hallways and the story goes that a school teacher was apparently killed or murdered on the grounds and her ghost can also be seen This one's for you, Ron. <laughs> this was the day that the motorcycles all came to town. Now, while Pex was on, we had to go to the Piper's Opera House because Jason was in charge of a cocktail, uh, like a cocktail making um, competition. Isn't she a cutie? Um, so everyone got to make a cocktail and you had to do a taste test and the, and the best one won, so to speak. Um, so Jade won this competition. There you go. It was very nice. <laughs> then um, my favourite place, the Silver Queen Bar, my favourite drink, sarsaparilla. Um, it's a glorious place to go and visit and have, have a drink. And hot dog. They sell yummy hot dogs there. And there's the beautiful Taylor and her beautiful little dog, Laika. And I'll be catching up with them again in Virginia City soon. This is St Mary's in the Mountains Church, another beautiful historical building, one that you really must go and see. Um, there's a fantastic museum right down the bottom in the cellar and oh, I've got to take more photos of that when I get back. Now the Cobb Mansion, that's where I stayed the last nights of my stay and can I just say that Connie, the owner of the Silver Queen and the Cobb Mansion, cooks up a mean breakfast in that kitchen. That was my breakfast the morning I left, and yummo, I'd already honed into it, so sorry about that. <laughs> but <laughs> it's delicious, and there's nothing better than sitting there. Connie just does a marvellous job. Um, this was my room up in the Cobb Mansion. I'm always showing you my rooms when they're messy. But anyway, a cute little room, everything you would need in there. Um, and then the morning before I left, I caught up with my favourite little horses there on my other friend Connie's doorstep. I just sat there and looked and thought, wow, I could, I could wake up to that view every morning. My friend Connie does. I wish I did. And then later on in the day, just before I left, I had to come back. Connie, Connie wasn't home. Um, I had missed her. But I just wanted to see them one more time before I drove off. So I sat one more time on Connie's porch and there's my favourite little wild horses. And then how's this for cheeky? No wonder Connie's trees are all just nice at the right height. The horses come in and eat all the leaves off the top of the, off of the bottom of the tree. Anyway guys, cheers and Virginia City, April, here I come. Oh, May actually. Cheers. And thanks for watching.